Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's take a look at this very simple amber tutorial. Now, just very, uh, I just want to quickly talk you through the scene setup. I've basically got a simple backdrop. I've got a area light, an area light pointing at the back. I've got an area light acting as um, a light rim. So basically, it's lighting the top edges of the objects. And then I have three other lights acting on the object. So two from the side and just to the front and then a large area light just above. Then got my camera obviously pointing at the objects and that's the scene set up as it is. Now I have got the objects in here and let me just switch to wireframe mode. And you can see that I've actually already also got some inclusions set within the amber objects and oh that's in the wrong place and um i have got some little icospheres acting as bubbles just move that forward a bit so it's in the object there we go so yes i've got those in i just turn on transparency you can see that those objects are inside those shapes so let's switch over to the shading view I'm using Cycles as my render engine and I will enable viewport shading and this one is the rendered view. So I've actually got the amber material already applied to this faceted version but I'm going to select this um, almost smooth egg shape or flattened egg shape and start a brand new material. If I press A and full stop on the number keypad then it should bring everything into focus here. Now we've got a principled BSDF shader and a material output, they're connected, we will need those. What I am going to do though is add a mix shader in between those two. And I'm going to add a layer weight node. And use the Fresnel output and plug that into the factor. Now, not a lot's going to happen with that just at the moment. I've got to do a few other things first. So we'll just keep that to one side. Now, shift A to find a noise texture. And that's the same for finding the mix shade and the um, layer weight node. Shift A and then use the search box to find the one you want. And then shift A and search for a map range node. And we will need two of those, so I'm just going to duplicate by pressing Shift D on that one. Plug the factor from the noise texture into the value on both map range nodes. This top one is going to go into the roughness of the principled shader. And this bottom one is going to go into the transmission roughness. Now if you don't see transmission roughness, you may have a different um, distribution method selected. Go for GGX random walk and then you should have all of the available bits and pieces that you need. Um, now then, let's start making some changes. So first up for the base colour, we're going to choose a nice amberish colour. We'll go for something like that. Now it doesn't look as dark, but that's going to come from the um, Fresnel distribution and also through the transparency. So we will get to that. Now the specular we're going to leave at 0.5. We've already got the roughness and the transmission roughness set, but we haven't actually got any transmission at all yet. So we're going to just increase that to 1. And you can see we've already got some transmission, some clear um, value placed on that object. Now for the top map range node we are going to change this bottom to min value minus 0.125 
and then the max at 0.3 and you can already see it's starting to get clearer because what we're doing is basically taking the maximum values and just squishing them a bit okay and on the bottom one the maximum value at the bottom should be 0 0.150 now for the noise texture we need to apply a mapping node and a texture coordinate node so I just selected noise texture and pressed control T that needs the node wrangler add-on enabled node wrangler add-on enabled so if you haven't already go to edit preferences add-ons search for node wrangler and make sure that's ticked okay for that we're going to use the hmm, let me check we're going to use the object value from the texture coordinate and while we're here we're also going to plug that value into the normal on the layer weight And we're going to change the blend value in that to 0 0.04. So you can see, when I increase this, it increases the... Um, uh, what do you call it? I can't remember what you call it. But anyway, it increases that. Now then. On the noise value... We're going to change that to 25 on the scale, 15 on the detail, 1 on the roughness, and we'll leave the distortion as it is. So basically what that's given us is a nice mottled effect that can be condensed by the map range and then adjusted by the main shader. Now, let's have a look. Now, believe it or not, that is our amber shader almost complete. However, I need some uh, more detail. Although, hang on, I think I need to change the index for ref refraction on this. Let's go for 1.57. Actually, let's go for 1.5. Now we need a bit of variety going on here, so we're going to add another noise texture. We'll take the vector from the mapping node into that. We're going to plug this into the normal on the principal shader, but because it's not converting it into normal data, we need a bump node to do that. And we need that to go into the height. So you can see now it's quite bobbly. But we want to adjust that. And have a slightly smoother finish. But still with um, some extra detail going on. So we're going to start by decreasing the scale to 3. Increasing deal to detail to 15. Roughness to 0 0.575 and distortion to 1. Then we're going to add a colour ramp. And we're just going to bring in the black and the white values very slightly. So that we can pick out some detail from that, we're going to get a map range node and plug that in between. And we're going to set the minimum value to 0 0.350, maximum to 0.4. And you can already see there how it's looking like a chipped surface. Um, for the two minimum value, 751, 0.751, and we'll leave this value at 1. And then for the bump node, we're going to decrease the strength to 0.25 and the distance to 0.02. Now you can see they're less prominent, but they're still there. It's almost like P 
pits and uh, chips in the surface. So those four nodes create the surface floors and these four create the actual amber shader and this just controls how the lighting actually works in conjunction with the shape itself. That all gets mixed together and sent through the material output. So you can see it is a very, very simple setup. Let me just bring that up a bit. It's a very, very simple setup. And in actual fact, it's mostly the lighting that's doing the work here because whenever you move it around, you obviously see different angles and different uh, parts of it. So uh, now about the inclusions, basically anything that I've put inside, I've applied a different material to. So let me select something that's in there. So this one I've created an amber air bubble material. It's basically a copy and paste of the majority of what was creating the amber color in our amber shader. But I've basically increased this color to a very desaturated value. And that just gives us this almost invisible bubble effect. Probably see it better in the other one. Yes. There. So we can see that bubble. And then for the actual object inside, that's got its own separate shader. And that is just literally a principled BSDF with a little bit of dark base color, tiny bit of subsurface, uh, a 0.25 on the specular, and then I think everything else is about the same. Oh, and I dropped the alpha value down to 0.9. That was just really to sort of give it a tiny bit of translucency. But anyway, let's go back. And if I chuck that on there, we'll see that I've made some slight changes on this actual one. In the fact that the values here are slightly different to what I said when I was setting up the material. I chose the other one just purely because um, it gave us a nice darker um, tone to the outer area on this oval one but as you can see for this faceted one it works quite well with these values so you, as you can see depending on the shape that you're applying this to you might need to just play around with these values a little bit anyway let's render this out I'm not going to do it at 4000 samples that's ridiculous uh, let's do it at 1024 and I'll go back to HD rather than 4k Otherwise, you'll be here for hours. And let's render it out, and I'll see you back here in a second. So there you have it, a very simple amber shader. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and we'll give it a thumbs up before you go. And of course, if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to make sure you receive those notifications. And... If you did like what you see, then please do remember to go back and check the full procedural materi materials playlist on my channel.